Do you want to play a game? What we've got right here is some Pro X Rebuild Roulette. It looks like we're doing a rear master cylinder rebuild. Welcome to the second video of the YZ300 build series. If you enjoy this video, please click the subscribe button. We might be able to hit 50,000 before the end of the year. Let's also shoot for 500 likes. As you can see, No Shave November is over. I was debating keeping it, but my sister told me I looked like a Jewish leprechaun and my dad told me I looked like Fido's ass. I guess you gotta appreciate the honesty from the family. But let's jump right into it, shall we? It would appear the sir clip and everything was already removed from this, so most of the disassembly has already been done for me. I have started to decide a color scheme for the bike, and I decided I'm actually going to paint these brake components. There's an age-old discussion about powder coat versus painting, and Cerakoting is now part of that discussion too. I've done a lot of painting on bikes in the past. Prep is by far the most important step, and if you prep right, paint actually holds up really, really well. Of course, you can't just use any paint for something like this. I'll be using VHT paints. These actually have to be baked secure, similar to powder coating, so it's not just your standard rattle can. With the right prep and the right paint, I anticipate these holding up every bit as good as powder coat or Cerakote. It's honestly just a little bit more tedious. So I need to rough up the surface so that the paint will adhere well to this and I'm going to do that with a scotch Bright pad. I'm going to hit this with a rough prime wheel to do a little bit of the leg work and then I will go back to the scotch Bright pad by hand. This is where a sandblast setup would be ideal and this is where the majority of the time is spent. Now I'm moving on to a 320 grit sandpaper which is what the can for the paint suggests. Now that I've thoroughly sanded this, it's very important to degrease the entire component. I'm gonna start at my kitchen sink with some Dawn dish soap. Make sure to not use the same sponge you use for food. Now at this point, the component's clean enough that I wanna make sure not to use a towel like this covered in brake fluid. And I'm even gonna switch gloves. Here I'm gonna be using a multi-purpose foaming prep cleaner. And this is designed to move wax, oils, and residues from the surface before painting. I know it's a good sign when I'm not seeing any dirt or anything else come off on the cloth that I'm wiping this with. This dirt means I need to go over this again and the surface is not perfectly clean yet. All right, after going over this another time, it is ready for paint. Of course, first I need to mask off the areas that I don't want paint. Of course, I want this sight glass to stay visible. That'll do. So winter in Montana calls for a makeshift paint booth and this will get the job done. So here are my steps. I already did the prep spray. I'm going to use some primer, paint, and then a clear coat. I know these say engine enamel. They work on engine components, which means they will also work on brake components. I just need to make sure to follow the baking instructions to cure it properly. VHD also has paint specifically for braking components. I already have some engine enamel on hand, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this on the brakes. All right, so per the instructions on the can, I'm going to do two light coats of this primer, 10 minutes apart, followed by one medium coat, wait a half hour, and then apply color. There's one light coat. It's always tempting to just keep on spraying and get full coverage. I have had a lot of runny paint jobs over the years because I'm impatient. It's something that you definitely have to follow the instructions to a T to get a good result out of. I think a lot of people under the impression that paint doesn't last are simply not doing it right. I might have been approaching a medium coat there. All right, final primer coat. I'm gonna lay it on just a little bit thicker and make sure I didn't miss anywhere. That should do it. Coverage is looking pretty good. Ready for the color coat. There's one light coat. Definitely don't have full coverage yet, but also hopefully not gonna have any runny paint. That's two light coats, and I'll definitely need to pay attention to a couple spots on that final medium coat. I think I've got nice and complete coverage after that third coat. The three color coats have been applied. It's now time for a clear coat. I'm a little skeptical about the gloss finish, but they don't make a matte clear. This really does help with the protection and longevity of how that paint's gonna last. So it's important to do, but I wanna make sure I like the finish before doing it to all the other parts. 
Final coat. It's looking pretty darn good. So one other thing that's important to do before the paint dries fully is take off the masking. Once the paint has dried fully, it's more susceptible to cracking or chipping when you try and take off the mask. So I just pulled off the piece of tape off the top and that's where I'm able to hold it steady. There we go. And look at that. Now this can fully dry for a few hours before I cure it in the oven. This master cylinder is now going in the oven at 200 degrees for one hour. I'm going to fully polish this master cylinder cap. I think it'll be a beautiful contrast with that black body. I gotta give an enormous shout out to Cameron Yamala and Prime MX. I'm just constantly astounded by what I can do with these cleaning wheels. Good boy, Leo. Were you having fun in the snow, my guy? So I finally tracked down the clevis in my box of parts, and it looks like it's a little bent. That said, I'm not sure it really matters. Taking a look at Reed's YZ250 right here. I don't think a little bend in that is really going to have all that much effect. I think I'll just make note of that one as a might need to order. Master cylinders out of the oven and ready for the rebuild. component down and three more to go. Now it's time to pop the piston. Doing this is always fun. Oops, I actually need to put the bleed valve back in. <laughs> that was not the right way to do that. <laughs> anyway, to remove this piston, I'm gonna shoot compressed air into here and it's gonna force the piston out. Locked and loaded. So if this isn't done properly, this piston will literally shoot out like a missile. So I pretty much wrap it real nice and tight with a t-shirt like that and then just start blasting air and you'll hear it pop. There we go, you hear that thing pop? And boom, there's our piston. Now these seals can come out, they will be replaced with the seals that come in the Pro X rebuilt kit. There's one. Nice, rear caliper fully disassembled. Oh, and now the bleed valve can come back out. On to the front. Ah, oops. I really should be wearing gloves for this. Proceeds to not put on gloves. Ooh, that mother tight. There it goes. The impact screwdriver's a lifesaver. If you don't have one, buy one. Ooh, we're just gonna hit that with a deep 12. Lock and load them. Now I have to get the pistons out of this one, which is a little trickier since there's two pistons, but I'll show you how I do it. So you start just like the rear until you get one piston out. Okay, so there goes one. But now I have this issue of there being a gaping hole right here. So I have this little piece of rubber here. I'm gonna place that rubber over the hole, put a clamp there, and clamp that down. Boom! There we go. Man, and this one is in desperate need of a rebuild. You can literally see the seals are just falling apart. All right, front caliper is fully disassembled. Yeet. Blitz Motorsports is the local Yamaha shop here in Bozeman. My absolute favorite shop in town. Those guys are super helpful and always friendly every time I go in there. Blitz, if you want to sponsor this build, I'd be happy to have you on board. Does anyone know why Yamahas have this little plastic floaty piece in the master cylinder? I've never seen it in any other brand. These brake components are nasty. So I'm going to start by soaking them in a little bit of degreaser. I've already got water in here and this just needs to be mixed like 20 to one. So I really only need a few ounces in here. This will take away a lot of the legwork on these parts, especially with this front caliper that's particularly nasty. So 
So after scrubbing away in the sink, I got a lot of grime off, but there is some gunk in here that's been here for so many years, only Prime MX cleaning wheels can get it off. Or sandblasting, of course, but as we've discussed, I do not yet have that capability. We're gonna use the little guy on the Dremel. pretty much two full days of work. So much goes into doing the prep and coating yourself, but man, is it rewarding to see the final product. These things are just pristine. I can't wait to see them on the bike. Once there's a bike for them to go on, of course. At the moment, it's just a frame. If you learned something in this video or enjoyed what you saw, please consider clicking that subscribe button. November was an awesome month for this channel and it would be incredible to hit 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Let's also see if we can get 500 likes on this video. There is so much more content to come for this YZ300 build, as well as a pretty big announcement coming soon. You're not gonna wanna miss that, so be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. I'll also be resuming progress on this big hog right here pretty soon as well. See you guys soon with another video. Oh.